Vultures are awe-inspiring birds. You see their eight-foot wingspan flying high above the African plains, for example. But unfortunately, vultures are having a really rough time at the moment. In India, for example, they're being poisoned by a, a drug that's used to treat cattle. In Africa, they're flying into power lines, they're flying into wind turbines, and they're being poisoned directly by poachers who are trying to hunt elephants and rhinoceros. So my research, or the focus of my research, has been trying to find ways to help that, uh, or stop that decline in vulture populations through trying to understand why they have this propensity for flying into wind farms and overhead cables. Wherever you find vultures, they perform a vital ecosystem service. They are essentially eating on all the dead things in the carrion that nothing else is particularly interested in. If that was to be left lying around, there would be a huge risk to human health in terms of bacterial infections, for example. So it's vital that we maintain these vulture populations so they perform their job within the ecosystem. Part of my research at Royal Holloway is working in collaboration with the Hawke Conservancy Trust here in Hampshire. And what we're trying to understand is why does a group of birds, the vultures, so famous for their amazing vision, keep flying into man-made objects such as wind turbines and overhead cables. We study vulture vision by measuring their visual fields. What that means is essentially we're trying to understand just what they can see around them, what they can see above them, what they can see below them. And we do that a little bit like if you went for a trip to the opticians, we shine a light into their eye. Now imagine you're driving along a road at night and occasionally you see animal eyes coming back at you from the side of the road. What you're getting is the light reflecting off their retina. That's exactly what we do when we measure the visual field of a bird. We shine a light into their eyes, we measure when we can see the light shining back at us, and when we can no longer see that light, it means the bird cannot see there. And through doing that, we can create a three-dimensional globe of what the bird can see around it. To our surprise, when we measured the visual fields of vultures, we found that they're actually quite unusual. They don't act, if you like, like other bird species. Within the vultures, however, there is variation in their visual fields. Not all vultures are the same. And there's one species in particular, the white-headed vulture. It turns out that this vulture actually actively hunts prey. It's the only known vulture species that does that. It doesn't just feed on carrion. To be able to hunt prey, the vulture has to actually be able to make sure that its talon makes contact with a moving object, i.e. the rabbit, for example, that of course is trying to get away. What that means is white-headed vultures are quite unique and they don't fly into man-made objects. For vultures, they are flying sometimes kilometers high up in the sky. They're immensely close to the sun. Without some kind of protection, much like us wearing our sunglasses, their eyes would get severely burnt. Vultures avoid getting their eyes burnt by having these really high eyebrow ridges called supraorbital ridges. And what they do is they stop the sun's harmful rays from damaging the retina of the bird. What that means is when the vulture is flying and looking down, it's essentially blind to its direction of travel. For these vulture species, they wouldn't be able to even see their hand here. One of the solutions is design a way to make vultures look up when they're approaching a man-made object. One way could be, for example, a specific noise that encourages them to look up to see where that noise is coming from. One new system that's being trialled in Dubai is to change the shape of the turbine itself. What they're using is a long needle-like structure where the device that captures the energy is hidden underground. This needle-like structure is firstly more flexible, so if a bird hits it, it doesn't kill it, but it's also more static. The research into vulture vision at Royal Holloway is still very much a work in progress. We're working very hard with the Hawke Conservancy Trust here. We're working hard with the energy companies to really try and find a solution to this problem so that we can have renewable green energy and we can have healthy vulture populations that are performing their vital ecosystem services around the world.